Welcome everybody to the Gym Master Show Live. How are you and you and you? Good to have you with us. This is show number two. That's right. We were on actually earlier today with our very special guests, the extraordinary and renowned Sir James Galloway, incredible virtuoso uh, flute player and uh, 30 million albums sold. <laughs> he was amazing. And his wonderful duet partner and wife and brilliant uh, flautist as well, Lady Jean Galloway. We're here for an epic exclusive episode of our show it was really terrific filled with music great uh, conversation inspiring conversation and wonderful moments from their beautiful home in switzerland if you missed that episode it's all available for you on our youtube channel at gym masters tv matter of fact some 38 almost 39 weeks of the Gym Masters Show Live are all available for you on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Some 200 plus episodes, 210, 20, 30. I'm losing count because we're doing so many shows. We are live generally every day, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live here on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. Sometimes we also do the Facebook. Tonight we're doing a YouTube exclusive on our YouTube channel. We welcome everybody, our international audience of viewers, or as we call them, loveities. And thanks, gang, for joining us for show number two. Many of you, I see familiar faces who were with us just about an hour ago when we had uh, Sir James Galway and Lady Jean Galway on here. Uh, they were brilliant. Again, you can see that episode and all the episodes incredible conversations, entertainment, levity, lovity as we call it on the Gym Master Show Live. This is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series that I started about 38, 39 weeks ago, sort of born out of my work as a TV and radio personality, presenter, host, journalist, actor, writer, producer, uh, stage MC, voiceover artist, and more. And for years, people asked me to do a show like this. So Back in late April, we got the television lights and built this home studio here along the uh, coast. Yes, we're along the beautiful coast here. We broadcast out of the greater New York City area uh, along the southern New England coast between New York and Boston. So, yes, we are snowed in, but not so bad because the roads are clear, but it looks really nice on the trees and on the lawns. So if everything stays cool. We should have a white Christmas here in the Northeastern United States, which would be nice because we haven't had snow like this in years. Last year, we hardly had any snow at all. Maybe one quick storm of like five inches and that was it. So again, this year, anything can happen. So hopefully the snow will stick around for a white Christmas. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. We're looking forward to a better and more beautiful and brighter 2021, that's for sure. We've got an illustrious and fabulous guest, Tony-nominated Bobby Spencer, J. Robert Spencer. Well, we'll call him Bobby, and uh, he can call me Jimmy. <laughs> and uh, his dear friend, actually, I, I met him when he was uh, with the crew on stage at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, and they were filming The Midtown Men, which was a really terrific uh, PBS special and Michael Longoria as well. And we may remember uh, maybe about two months ago, Michael was also a guest here on the Gym Masters show live. And we had a lot of great uh, entertainment with Michael and uh, it was terrific having Michael on and catching up with him as well. So, but of course, originally uh, a very special guest, uh, Bobby Spencer was in Jersey Boys on Broadway as well. So we have a lot to talk about. We welcome everybody. We've got our mug filled with... Uh, <laughs> well, earlier we had coffee. So it is the evening. We have two shows today, two shows tomorrow, two shows Sunday. I feel like I'm a theater. And then another one on Monday. May your days be merry and bright. We're in the holiday spirit. Our uh, set is all festively decorated. We have in here just something very light and refreshing. <laughs> It's actually a little more of the Baileys, uh, the Baileys we had in the coffee earlier. And, uh, you know, my Irish side is coming out and it's the holiday season and we're working our tails off. So good to see everybody. Quick uh, hello to some of our loveties here and then we'll welcome our very special guest. He's all set up uh, live and direct from his home in Portland, Oregon. And of course, that's a beautiful area in the uh, northwestern United States, the northwest Pacific. And... Um, I got to get out there. I haven't been to Portland or to Seattle and all my travels and TV and radio. Those are areas I got to get to. Tesla Bella, who's in warm and sunny Florida, <laughs> says, good evening. She's a wonderful actress, of course, as you know, and uh, she's been a guest on our show. She's a voice artist, does wonderful character voices. 
and she's a comedian. Good evening, Mr. Levity. Hope you had a great day, and welcome to your special guest, Robert, in Levity Hall. That's right. With all the Levity's tests, go back on YouTube and watch the episode we just did this afternoon with Sir James Galloway and Lady Jean Galloway. You're going to love that. I welcome all the Lovities watching on our uh, YouTube channel right now. We wish you happy holidays as well. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel at Gym Masters TV so you can comment uh, as well. Back for show number two of the day. That's great, Bernadette. You were just with us an hour ago, and you're back for show number two with Bobby Spencer, Tony-nominated actor, singer, voice uh, artist as well. Hello again, Jim and fellow Lovities. Good to see you. Mary Bishop is here from Florida warm and sunny Florida. I hope it is. Although I heard that Florida from our family down there, it's cooler than it should be uh, for this time of the year. Good to see you, Mary and Merry Christmas to you. Welcome Jay Robert to the hall. I love that. <laughs> you know, there's a men's clothing store in New York called Robert Hall. I don't know if everybody remembers that. A test might. Uh, hello, ladies, Bernadette, Mary. Everybody says hello to everybody. I love that. Thank you for working so hard to entertain us, Mr. Lovety. Uh, they are all the Loveties. The viewers call themselves the Loveties. They call me Mr. Lovety. Uh, and this is Loveyville or Lovety Hall. And that's because, again, I once fouled up when I combined love and levity and created levity. And everybody has loved that word since. A warm welcome to Jay Robert. And you can call him Bobby. He says Bobby is perfectly fine. He's nice and casual and relaxed. So Jay Robert Spencer is his official name, just like James is my official name. But tonight will be Bobby. Uh, hello, Tess. And Maureen is here. We did it. Loveities. We made it to Friday. Hope you all had a good week. Now on with another amazing evening in Lovety Hall. This is our second show of the day. Elliot is here. Welcome, Elliot. Hello, Robert. Hi from your Broadway producer friend. Good to welcome you here, Elliot, on our YouTube channel. Good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. And hopefully you'll subscribe to the channel. We are here every day, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Although this weekend we have shows at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. with amazing guests. Willie is here from the Netherlands. Here we go again. How spoiled we are. Two shows in one day. My pleasure, Willie, watching in Amsterdam area there in Holland. Jill Jason is here. Hi, Jim, and hi, everyone. Good to see you, Jill. Marilyn in Wichita, Kansas. Hello, Jim, and all our loveties. We love that. Everybody's also saying hello to each other. I think that was terrific. And we'll watch it on YouTube. Perfect. Christopher Joseph is here. Hey, Christopher, watch the show we did earlier as well with Sir James Galway, because I know you're a music person and uh, you're in your band. You're going to love it. They played live too. It was really incredible from Switzerland. Hello, Jimbo. Uh, love it. He's a special guest, Robert Spencer. Good to see you in Ohio. Kathy Short, watching in Cleveland, Ohio. Good evening, Jim, and love it. He's nice, nice, nice. And uh, hello, everyone. I've been missing all the love it lately. Happy that I can be with you guys tonight. We've been waiting for you. We kept the porch light on for you, and we're so glad that you're here with us right now. Maureen says, I'm so excited for tonight. I'm a Jersey Boys junkie. Perfect. May your days be merry and bright. Thank you, Jim. My pleasure, Tess. And uh, Maureen says, welcome, Bobby. Yes, welcome and welcome and welcome. <laughs> and uh, so much more. All right, gang, we're going to welcome him to the show and keep the posts coming. Keep the comments coming. We are here to brighten your day, inspire you, entertain you, and do all that we do on this Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. Very excited to have him on the show. This is one of the cool shots. Again, he's a brilliant actor, singer, as well as voice artist as well. And uh, Tony nominated. And of course, you may remember him from some of the incredible classics, Jersey Boys as well, and the Midtown Men. We're going to talk about all of this and so much more. Um, he is live. We have all kinds of music. He's got songs lined up for us. We just did a nice sound check. Everything is ready to go, and I'm ready to welcome him live. My great friend from Portland, Oregon. Bobby is here. Hey, Bobby, Hello. welcome. Good to have you with Thank us. You. Oh, it's happy. great to be here. Hello. Hello, and happy holidays. How are you doing? Uh, we are doing okay, I suppose, in this in this crazy COVID Christmas. Uh, I, you know, I know everybody has their own story. Uh, everybody's hanging in their best they can, but we've got our tree up. We've got a lot of presents. My folks, uh, my, my sisters, my mom, uh, everybody lives in Texas. So we just got a big, uh, parcel of presents from Texas sent the other day and our kids were, were pretty excited. 
That's great. So yeah, same thing here. Like nobody's really traveling. Normally, probably they'd be coming up to Oregon or you'd be going to Texas. Yeah, right? we'd be going to Texas. Yeah. yeah. And we would be going to Florida. While well, you got that mug, let's toast. We always like to ah, drink. Yeah. Salud. Salud. Salud and slancha and cheers <laughs> and mazel tov and everything else. Mm. Thank you for having me on. Although this mm. is just hot water, honey, and apple cider vinegar. Well, you have some singing to do, so you know. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm actually mine. a great. That's a great combination. It's very good for the vocal cords. Yeah. Oh yes, it's good for the everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Bailey's that's in here, which is just light. <laughs> you wouldn't want to have that if you're doing singing. That's for sure. Well, actually, speaking, you shouldn't be either. But yeah, I know. Let me welcome uh, some folks here for you. Welcome, Bob, to the best show of the world, the Gym Master Show. Thank you. Willie's watching in the Netherlands. All right. Uh, where it's like 1 a.m. and she didn't want to miss it. Hello, Robert. Welcome to the land of liberties. Cheers. Kathy Short is here from Cleveland. Hello. Have Cleveland you been, rocks. Have you been to oh, Cleveland? Been to Cleveland about a lot. And uh, yeah. been, oh, yeah, I've been there quite a bit. I love it. How could you not? That's right. Absolutely everything, love everything it. it says, man. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. All of that. That's right. That's right. It's, they got a wonderful Polish community there, too. And I got a chance to dine at some of the great restaurants that uh, mm. are there from some Polish friends. Absolutely love Jersey Boys Bernadette, of course. And Elliot is here. Bobby, great to see you, Elliot. That was yeah. nice surprise. Hi, Elliot. And thank you. I, I emailed him last night. And how nice that he's visiting us. He really is uh, a, a great gentleman. And uh, he's hired the Midtown Man for a couple of huge parties that he always puts on. He's a very, very uh, proactive gentleman, a very ambitious yeah. guy, and he does a lot for community and a lot for individuals. So hi, Elliot. Miss that you, buddy. Is, he's in the right place then, because that's what we're all about here on this show. And uh, you and I, of course, and met, and Michael Longoria, we met when you guys were filming the the PBS special, The Midtown yeah. Man. We were doing there that, is. baby. There it is. There it right is. There. Right there. Oops. Absolutely. It's hard to like put stuff on the camera. I always get like, where am I? Does it go this way? Does it go this way? But here, we'll give you the full screen. That was so spectacular time that night, man. And uh, we spent a long time putting this together and uh, we're very proud of it. And, uh, you know, it was a great uh, opportunity. The Midtown Man was, uh, you know, put together because we had been together in Jersey Boys and uh, we had been asked to do a couple of, you know, just small party events. Uh, as things were going on and in those party events, you know, we were still in the show So we could not do any kind of Jersey Boys material, but hey, there's great music from the 60s, right? Mm -hmm. So we're yeah. taking out, you know, we're doing Moms and the Papas, the Turtles, the Zombies, the Rascals, Motown and and all of a sudden we've had this show Once we were out of Jersey Boys, then yeah, we could add in of course some some Frankie Valley tunes But really it's a love of the 60s that we had we've been on the road for 10 years We did over a thousand performances we put out a couple of really, really great CDs. I'm really proud of the work we did on them. And, you know, I come from a, a family of retail. My father was a huge retail guy for 42 years. So to me, getting the best product to the customer means a lot. And we spent a long time on these CDs. And uh, and then we did a, a Christmas song, actually. If, if anybody wants to look it up, look up Stevie Van Zant and the Midtown Men. And the song is called All Alone on Christmas. And we recorded that with Stevie and it's awesome studio his purple <laughs> couch and everything purple studio uh yeah. way, way down in the village about i think about five years ago he sure is a great guy actually he sure is a down-to-earth individual that was a great song it was great to work with him in the studio i mean how often mm -hmm. you get something like that an icon like oh, stevie absolutely. stevie van zandt man. absolutely um and Karen Ayani, who's watching, good to see you, Karen, in wonderful Pittsburgh. She just retired after 43 years at the University of Pittsburgh working there. Oh, Hello, goodness. Bobby from Pittsburgh. Uh, this is a nice holiday treat to have you on tonight. Jennifer Barry in Allentown, Pennsylvania says, happy holidays, Bobby. Thank you. Love I went to high school in York, PA. I graduated mm -hmm. in York, PA, just so, you know, it's a scotch down the road from Allentown, but nevertheless... It's uh, it's in the vicinity, yeah. yeah she's Graduated very... in 87. Can you believe that, Jim? 1987. From high school? From high school. From wow. High school. Yeah. <laughs> the great 80s, right? Absolutely. It was. <laughs> well, you guys took it back a little bit further when 
the Jersey Boys opportunity came to be. But before yeah. that, I want people to really, you know, you've you've watched this show. You've been binging a little bit on it. And I, and I appreciate, you know, the words you were saying before we went live about the feel and the vibe of this Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. Um, I like people to really get a chance as we bring back the Lost Art of Conversation to not only learn about me and my life as their hosts and the viewers interacting, the loveties and learning about each other, but also when we have the guests on to learn about them. So tell us about those early years for you, Bobby, and some of those early inspirations in your life. Uh, you mentioned the big re retail component. I have a lot of retail in my family too. Um, what were some of those early inspirations in your life that sort of turned you on to performance, to music, singing, musicianship, acting? Well, it was my... It was my love for music, and that came from my family, my four older sisters and my mom and dad. As I said, my dad was in retail, so we were born in Delaware, moved to New Jersey, Minnesota, Texas, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Virginia, uh, and uh, we had this yellow station wagon with the wood paneling. Yeah. Right? Yeah, remember and, that one? Uh, oh, my gosh, dude. It was our favorite car. It had the greatest eight-track player and the greatest radio, and, of course, the music we were listening to um, – my sisters had to listen to that station and this song and that song. And so I was listening to my mom and dad. It was country and Western. It was George and Tammy and then Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn and the great Merle Haggard and uh, the great Willie Nelson, all those guys. And we would drive to see our family members. That's my pup up. We would drive in that car to get to that family farm. This is us arriving. Look how excited we all are. And we had been singing the Beatles the whole trip, or we'd been singing the Bee Gees, or we'd been singing Barry Manilow, or we'd been singing Kansas, or Van Halen, or, you know, I, it was an eclectic variety of music that we just all loved. And I learned it off the radio. So when we moved to Texas in 1981, I was in fourth grade, and I found my calling in fourth grade. My artistic journey really formed in fourth grade. You know, I'd been building it all these years, just hearing this music and listening and going, hey, I know the song by the Beatles. But all of a sudden you get sick of the melody and you think, well, what's that other part? Oh, that's the high harmony. And who's singing that? Paul McCartney? OK. Before you know it, you know, I was learning music. So when I heard Tom Sawyer by the rock group Rush in that station wagon, and it's just me and my mom. And I'm a new kid to Texas. I have no friends. So, you know, like this song, you know, Subdivisions by Rush off the Signals album, you know, that is yeah. primarily talking to kids who are lonely, who are in the basement, who don't right. fit in. And when I heard Tom Sawyer and I heard that, that drum solo, drum solo, I was taken to a whole other planet. And I looked at my mom. We literally pulled up in our driveway and that car stopped and that song stopped. I looked at her and I said, I want to play drums. Mm. And she looked at me and there was a pause. I guess she knew I was totally serious because she said, okay. Now, I mowed a ton of lawns that summer. Yeah. Bought my first drum set. Started taking drum lessons by this awesome old guy. I can't remember his name, but he always had a cigarette dangling. And he was showing me, you know, the X's or the cymbals. And he was showing me how to read music. And he was teaching me ACDC licks. He was teaching me, you know, just like the groundwork to bad company. Oh, my gosh. So I've been playing drums my whole life. Wow. And, uh. I had to tear my set down, our old house. We had to sell our home because of all the stuff going on in the world and unemployment and yeah, everything. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to survive. So we sold our pad. I had to pack up my drums. We're living in a rental. So I miss having my drums out and being able to play them uh, all the time. It's my yeah. Zen. So I'm kind of missing my Zen, but I still have my awesome guitar. I got this sucker down in New York City, down on Lafayette Street. Um, yeah. 35 years ago, I bought this thing. It was 15 years old before I even got it. So it's my partner. It's It's been the longest uh, uh, relationship I've had my whole life. <laughs> you know, this, right. is, this, is my, this is my favorite writing partner, my, my guitar. Yeah. Was there any culture shock coming from sort of the mid-Atlantic, almost Northeast, going to Texas for you at that young age, different lifestyle, different way of uh, operating? Or did you blend right in quickly with Texas? I blended in. I actually did blend in rather quickly. Um, and, and it was all due because the state before we moved to Texas, we lived in Minnesota mm. and they had a town show yeah. and I was in third grade and Saturday night fever was really popular. And I would sit in my, 
sister's uh, uh, um, bedroom and listened to her stereo, and she had all these great albums. It was, you know, Bruce Springsteen, you know, it was uh, Asbury Parker, it was Born to Run, you know, and it was Peter Frampton Comes Alive. It was the Hotel California by the Eagles. It was all this great vinyl. And um, she had, um, she, and she had Saturday Night Fever, and I could not stop listening to the Bee Gees, man. And of course, I couldn't see the movie. It was rated R. I'm in third grade, but I love the music. And she said, you know what? Uh, you should dance. Let me teach you how to dance and do a dance to this song for the talent show. It'll, you know, you'll, it, people will notice you. It'll get you friends. I did this dance. I won first place in Minnesota. And then, boom, we moved to Texas. I mm. have no friends. I know no one. And the first couple of weeks, they're having a talent show. So I was like, well, I already have that song done to Andy Gibbs' Shadow Dancing. Right. So I was like, Shadow Dancing. And I did this dance, and uh, and I was no longer the new kid. I was, you know, the new, you know, the big man on campus. They started, and in you know, fourth grade, they started the Bobby Spencer fan club after that talent show dance. So it was insane. So that is amazing. Uh, that is really, really cool. I just want to show you some of the lovity coming in here. Logan J. Moore. Hi, Bobby. We're loving the show. Thank you, Logan J. Appreciate that. Hi from Michael and Darlene Knight. Hey, all in right. Connecticut. At Love C2. you guys. Connecticut. Yeah, they probably, well, Connecticut, you've probably seen me for a long time on CPTV, Connecticut Public Television there on public television. Good to see you in Connecticut, guys. Very cool memories from Christopher in Ohio. Denise uh, is saying, hi, Jim and Bobby. Hi. Denise. Good to see you, Denise, and welcome. Marilyn in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, welcome, Bobby, to Lovety Hall. You are now a Lovety. That didn't take long. You're now a Good. Lovety. <laughs> There's Tony's, Emmys, Peabody's, Telly, and uh, there's Lovity's. Are your feet tingling now that you're a Lovity? Uh, no, something else is tingling though, but I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> your, your ears are ringing, right? <laughs> yes, my ears. You're right. <laughs> Hi, Jim and Bobby from uh, Jacksonville, Florida, from Ann All right. Rachiak. Florida. Happy, happy holidays, Bobby from Jennifer. They're in Allentown. More coming in here. Uh, Jill says, great stories, Bobby. And Kathy says, uh, that's so cool. The Bee Gees were great. Yeah. Jennifer asks, what kind of drum kit do you have? I've got a red sparkly Gretsch uh, oh. Blackhawk Gen Zen jamming on my drum kit. I have a Gretsch. I have a white marine, uh, uh, marine pearl. Uh, it's a 1977 Catalina Club. Mm. And I love it. And I've got about five Zildjian's. And, uh, and then I, I ended up, I really wanted a huge floor tom. So I ended up, I couldn't find another Gretsch white marine. Uh, marine pearl about the size of a, of a of a 20 just couldn't so i ended up getting a big dw that kind of matched it but um i love it for when i go you know that's the that's the that's the tom that i need when i play limelight by rush it's at the end of that song when he's like exactly Down. yeah what was the first instrument that you learned on then as a kid it was drums. It was the drums. It was, yeah. Drums, yeah. Yeah, I had a little CB700 drum set. That's what it was. Before uh, I got up to a Pearl Export series. Yeah, I, I really mowed a lot of lawns. I loved it. I, I was in there three to four hours a day playing drums. Well, in Texas, you didn't have to shovel a lot of driveways. Like we, <laughs> we had to do that up here. Yeah. <laughs> shovel no, the no, driveways. It was mowing lawns. Mowing the lawns, mowing the lawns. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's your lovely trophy. Better than the... Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. Yes, <laughs> everybody says that. Um, so that's cool. Uh, other instruments too come into your life along the way. Well, the guitar did, and that my sisters were playing, so I they just taught me chords, and I was just playing the chords that I knew. But when my when I got into New York, uh, my first Broadway show was Sideshow in 1997, yeah. and you know Henry Krieger and Bill Russell. They wrote some beautiful melodies and beautiful lyrics and beautiful music in that show. And when I got a, a cast in that show, I was a swing. So I was covering all the guys in the show, praying that someone would get violently sick <laughs> so I could, you know, go on stage and do my thing or slip, on a, thing. slip on a banana peel, whatever. And uh, <clears throat> I was uh, I was taken again. I, I, I had to write again. The music in that show, I hadn't written songs in a long time. And then... I was like, well, shoot, man, I, I, I'm just going to go buy a guitar, you know? And I started writing and I just, I just didn't stop. Mm -hmm. There was a chunk of time I did stop. Obviously I just stopped writing songs altogether, but then 
you know, comes in waves. When I was actually on the road with the Midtown Men is when all these other so songs started cultivating. Right. Because when you're on the road and you do 80 to 100, you know, concerts a year and you're with a seven piece band mm. and you're listening to four part all the time with all these great music that you're doing from the 60s. How could you not be inspired? How could you not want to write something? So we had four days in L.A. of just sitting. We had done our concert, but we had like, I don't know, four days of nothing before we had to go do the next run. And I was like, well, I'm not going to fly all the way back to New York. I'm just going to chill, get my sleep and rest. And I had these songs in my head. And I had no guitar with me. So I booked down to Guitar Center and I bought this little mini, you know, GS mini Taylor. And I wrote five tunes in probably three hours when I got back to that hotel. And I recorded them all in Minnesota in our uh, manager's studio. And I was supposed to release, I was, you know, I was like, I'm gonna release all these new tunes on an album. You know, and this was three years ago. But that was like, no one buys albums anymore, man. They just want one song that they dig. So I'm like, I'm just starting to now just slowly Get them off the shelf. People can go on iTunes or Spotify or Pandora and they can look up J. Robert Spencer and see all the stuff that I have going on that I've been doing not only three years ago, but the newer stuff that I've, I've endured here at the house with my little, you know, you know, my little equipment here with my little microphone and my drum set and my guitar and our piano and the bass guitar. So, you know, we've had to become ultra creative in this time you know so it's kind of good timing that i had all this stuff already in the can and on the shelf and i could just kind of like yep i'll just put this one out there up oh, hope someone likes this one up oh, it's christmas do you like that one so i'm i'm hoping people dig at least one song yeah, out of all the ones i have they're saying yes i know they're saying yes uh Stepping back just a little bit, what would you say was one of those early big breaks for you where the door opened up and then all of a sudden things started really cooking for you, Bobby? Uh, it was it was Jersey Boys. I, it was seven years bef after Sideshow. It was seven years until Jersey Boys. How did even Sideshow happen? What were, where were you at in your life? What were you doing when you were auditioning for that and that opportunity came? Because that's a big opportunity too. Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, I was just in the city. I had I got my equity card. I'd gone on the road for three months with a little children's theater show, the mm. wonderful company called Theater Works. Yeah, oh yeah. And we did great. that show. They were. And I came back with my equity card. I went to every audition I could for four months. And then I had seen a reading of Sideshow and I thought, whoa, I gotta get in that show. And when the auditions hit, I went to the audition. I'm in line like everybody. And uh, everybody's got their Miss Saigon or their Les Mis, or their chess music songbook, and I've got the Beatles. And I'll never forget David Chase, the music director of Sideshow, and he's an extraordinary, he's gone on to grand, great heights since. He comes out in the hallway and he goes, listen to me, if I hear one more guy coming and sing Les Mis, or Miss Saigon, <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. I want rock and roll. And he yeah. shuts the door, he was really irritated. I was like, oh. So now everybody's scrambling for music. I'm like, I got the Beatles. So um, it just worked I, out for me. You didn't sing one singular sensation? <laughs> no, I sang um, Golden Slumbers. Yeah. Cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. And so that, so that was my first eye. gig. Yeah. yeah. And then worked the out. Jersey Boys. I mean, how did that, uh, that, that was quite a run with Jersey Boys. How'd that happen, Bobby? I was in LA at the time. Uh, my wife and I were married. We were living in New York. Um, and, you know, 9 11 happened. Yeah. And when that happened, I was actually in Nashville, Tennessee, doing a show. My wife was in California doing a show. She was doing Dracula um, at La Jolla. And she called me that morning, you know, telling me what was going on. Then when I turned on the TV, I saw all of it. Yeah. And yeah. so we just kind of cool. thought we just got married. Maybe mm -hmm. we should just try something new. She was in L.A. She was digging it. I was like, well, let's let's come out here. Well, when we got out there, um, I was couldn't find any work, so I was walking dogs on the beach. And at the time, I was waiting tables as well, Tony Romas. And it was just me and all these amazing friends and artists. Ian and Eshet Nelms are film directors now after waiting tables. They're like my best friends. And their big film out this holiday season is called Fat Man, which is about Mel Gibson as Santa Claus. Okay. Right. And we're, we're all in that time creative and hungry. And we start shooting short films. We start running around the town. We're doing gorilla shoots, you know, around the town with the films. And, and we're just like, see that uh, street? Just pull over there and do, we're shooting stuff. We were, I was taking classes at the Groundlings. I was writing sketch comedy, performing stand-up. And I had 
uh, a bass player that just moved in underneath me and he had a studio. So I was also recording music. It was crazy going on, but I had no creative job. You know, mm -hmm. I was just paying the rent. And then two years, I guess three years into it. Yeah, three years, I get this phone call. Hey, they want to see you for a show called Jersey Boys. And I said, uh, well, what's it about? About Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. And I immediately was like, I don't want to do another Mamma Mia. Jukebox musicals, musicals are getting a bad rap. I don't want to do it. Well, apparently it's not, they said. Well, when I read the script, I literally was like, oh my mm. gosh, I forgot yeah. that song. I forgot yeah. about that song. I didn't know they sang that song, right? Right. So I'm going through the script and I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, I know that song. And I read the script, it's Marshall Brickman, it's Rick Ellis. It's so good. Des Mackinoff's gonna direct it. So the trifecta hit, all the stars were in alignment, right? And there we were, we were the hottest thing. You know, we were in La Jolla, we did the first read, we're singing it, we're sitting there and I'm like, this is going back to Broadway. I called my wife and I go, well, I'm coming back to New York with the lead in a Broadway show. I just had such, such a sure feeling about it. And to be honest with you, if you want the truth, um, I was one night in California missing my wife, missing my life, and I was ranting to God. Mm. And I was like, I'm done with this. I paid my dues. Right. I'm on my knees. And I preached and I was like, I'm done with this. And I promise you, I swear, I heard, okay, shut up. I heard it in my head. Mm -hmm. And I went, okay. Okay. And then yeah. I got and then I got Jersey Boys. Mm. And then I got it. It was crazy. So what was I'm, that like, that experience and working with the guys too, the other cast members? We, it was it was a dream because um it was intense because you had to get it all done quickly because when you're in La Jolla, you had, I think maybe two and a half weeks to get it all done. Now you have to remember all the choreography and play your bass guitar that I had to learn and your massive monologues and dialogue and all the harmony. Mm. It was a quadruple show. It was, uh, it was great. It was, I would never change it for the world. It was the greatest time to be an artist and create and collaborate. And you learn a lot doing a show like that with a guy like uh, Des Mackinoff, especially cause he's like, do it again. Do it again. We get done with the scene, scene change. Yeah. He goes, do it again. He wants it like this, this, this. So mm -hmm. it teaches you a lot. It teaches you a lot. And in, 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 a, in a moment like that, when you're in a room with the greatest of the, of the great. And then what happened from there, Jersey Boys, the doors that opened up after Jersey Boys? Of course, Midtown Men is one of those things, but other things in between, perhaps, that uh, came along your way, Bobby. It was... Um, a lot of great opportunities. Uh, you know, I continued to work um, in readings and workshops of new musicals or new plays. And then that picture right there, that's obviously that's next to normal. And I was doing Jersey Boys and they were doing a workshop for the second stage and I was cast as the therapist. And uh, hi, Doreen and Frank. Love you too, guys. I miss you guys. I'm gonna stop real quick. Hi, Monica. How you and Tommy doing, man? Hi. All right. So. These are my old dear friends. Hey guys, love you guys, miss welcome you guys. Welcome Monica, welcome Doreen on our YouTube channel. We love it. Welcome guys. And I, during this reading and this workshop of this show called Feeling Electric, mm -hmm. I was literally like, oh my gosh, this is the next huge thing. This is right. awesome. This is like Les Mis meets Rent. Um, and so when it came time to, when it came time to, for Next to Normal, um, I couldn't do it. I just did the workshop. It could not perform in the second stage pr production because I'm still in Jersey Boys. Mm -hmm. When I left Jersey Boys, I literally ran into Brian Darcy James. Brian Darcy, of course, is a stellar actor and Broadway nominated star, but he was the husband in that reading I did of Next to Normal. And I was the therapist and I would sit there in the corner going, man, I wish I could get a chance to play that part one day. You know, I really think I could, I would be able to, you know, do a good job with the dad role. And then I run into Brian Darcy on the street when I'm, you know, leaving the show and where am I gonna go? And he goes, hey, how you doing, man? We're catching up and he goes, hey, you know what? I'm going to do Shrek. And they're looking to cast next to normal because they're gonna take it to DC for one more try before, you know, hopefully come to Broadway. So you may wanna call them. And I said, thanks, Brian, yeah. So I called up Michael Greif and the director and I called up Tom Kitt, the, the musical writer and I said, I really want to be seen for the dad, the husband, please. Well, we still got, you know, the role of the therapist available. And I was like, no, I really want to be seen for the husband, please. And I went in and it just worked out. And I, I just, 
it just worked out that the piece is so easy to connect with and, and uh, it's a beautiful haunting um, show. And lo and behold, you know, it, it, it changed not only our lives in doing it, but it changed so many lives of so many audience members that saw it. I've heard so many stories over the years about this subject matter, this rock opera about bipolar depression. And when you're given a piece like that, all you want to do is deliver the best job you can as an actor. Right. But you don't really, I wasn't really focusing other than, you know, getting it second nature so I didn't have to think about and focus on the emotion and the relationships, right? It wasn't until I came out the stage door that I really, really, really learned more about the show because I was hearing it from actual people who had been living it. Right. People would be like, hey, man, I just saw you on stage. You're living my life. Right. Uh, Hugh Jackman came up to me after the show and said, oh, my gosh. He said, my mother was bipolar. So when I was watching a performance, it's as if I was watching me and my dad. Really heavy stuff, heavy stuff. But the show ended up healing a lot of people. And I'm just so blessed to be, I was saying it the other day to my kids, you know, I was practicing for our show and I'm singing a song from the show. And when I got done singing the song, my, my daughter goes, she's 12 and she goes, that's a really pretty song. I go, it really is. And I said, and I, and I pinched myself. I truly do. And I go, I can't believe I'm so lucky that that I'm on this CD, that I'm on this music, that I get to sing these songs, and it really is a humbling thing. And and I I just you know anyway I could go on about it, Jim. <laughs> it's a long way from Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It is very very cool. Where does your passion and your enthusiasm come from? I don't know what else to do. Yeah. I, I really love entertaining people. I always have. And, but yeah. also, you know, everybody always says when they're on stage, um, and we say this as well, we want you guys for the next, you know, 85 minutes, 90 minutes, just forget about the world, forget about what's going on. But Hey, you know what? It, it does it for me too. I get to escape the world. I don't think about anything when I'm there except do I sound good? Is the band on? Game you know, on. Yes. Yeah, is game on. Is, is that too, person yeah. smiling? You know, it's just, uh, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's that for me too. It's not just about making them escape. I want to escape too, you know, and I do, I get to. And you love, I love live, uh, you know, working in television and radio. I love, you know, I've done a lot of scripted teleprompter stuff that's rehearsed and perfected, but I also love live. And you obviously have done years worth of live performing as well. There's just something about live and that anything can happen and you got to go out there and make magic and make it look easy and effortless and smooth, cohesive and all those senses within yourself. Like for me, when I'm doing things live, um, it, it's like the adrenaline is at top level. It's a sport yeah. to me. All the cylinders are firing. Game on. So I fully relate to what you're talking about. And that's how it is for you, right? You love the challenge of doing it live and the exhilaration of the response and the interaction of live. And I love that every night it's a different audience. So something different can happen. And it right. usually does. You know, when we started out with the Midtown Men, our show was getting developed as we were doing it on the road. Like a stand-up comic tries out material Yes, in Boston or here in this city. And I'm like, man, I can't do that joke. That's not going to work. That's what was happening to us. Well, I'd, be try I'd be thinking of stuff like, I'm going to try that tonight. And I would literally in my head go, I know it's not going to work, but I got to try it because I could be wrong. Uh, so it was really amazing to have that different energy. And I found uh, jokes through these accidental journeys with the audiences and the different audiences and the energy and everything. So really it's, it, it's, uh, audiences, the play of the audience can really elevate not only your show, but, uh, bring you, uh, these wonderful stories that you can add and jokes you can add as you go on. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So uh, uh, in recent years, what have you been working on and how have you been getting through this nutty, crazy sort of unchartered year that we've all been dealing with? Uh, when March 13th hit, I was in New York on March 11th and 12th for my, you know, it's my last callback for this Broadway show. And uh, uh, up to that point, Everybody's wearing masks. It was every day was something new going on. And I was like, this isn't good. This is going to, this is going to be bad. When March 13th hit, I got a call from our rock manager saying every concert we had booked was gone. We had 20 or so privates booked from March until July. And then we were booking our holiday hit show. So now I'm like, okay. And I 
had a horrible time getting unemployment. It took me 35 weeks before I received any money from unemployment. And I still have an exorbitant amount of checks I'm waiting on. You look, man, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer because everybody's Debbie Downer right now. And rightly so. It's a hard thing for everybody unless you're a cajillionaire. Yeah. So I'm trying to provide. I'm trying to adapt. And we had to sell our home. I'm not going to sit in a home that I can't pay mortgage on right. and just let the bank. No, man, I need the man out of my life. And so we sold that pad. And I had to, you know, I have to look out for my kids. Our son sure. plays cello. Our yeah. daughter plays violin and piano. They're both beautiful kids. Uh, we tried homeschooling with all this going down. But this, as great as they are as kids and as students, it just wasn't the right vibe for us in a family household. So they're back on their Zoom in their old school rooms with their old friends. And they're absolutely much more happy and copacetic with that. So it's we're trying to find balance and happiness. And we're trying to continue like any artist when it's taken away from you. Yeah, I think that everybody right now that does this for a living and now they can't, they're struggling, but also emotionally, they're probably saying to themselves, well, what am I if I'm not this? Who am I if I'm not out there doing this? Right. So all you can do is right. hone in on what what it is that you do. I write songs. I, I play drums. I love it. And I painted. Hold on. Hold on. This thing's a monster. Now I'm pointing this out because I spent my life traveling. And then one day a girlfriend of mine posted a picture of mountains and I went off. And for three weeks I painted this thing. You're looking at 30 layers of paint at least over the years. And I have been 30 by 30. I've been painting nonstop. And uh, I hadn't painted in over seven years. That's one of those things when you got busy on the road with the midtime and one of your loves, you can't do anymore because you have no time for it. Well, when COVID hit, I had time and I had still had a ton of brushes and paints out in that shed and I, a lot of canvases and I just went to town. And, How long um, did that take you to do that? that one? That's, this that, one? That's, that's brilliant. It's really Thank magnificent. You. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, it's there. I'll never do another one like it. It's like my one hit wonder. I've done some paintings, and but this is this one really speaks to me. Um, this it took about three about weeks nonstop, three weeks. at least six or eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. I drove my wife crazy, but I was like, "Listen, I'm in the zone. Just let me finish this. Let me get just this off get, my off my get, chest." Got to have something to complete, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now people are going to ask: Are is any of your work for sale too? You know, I sold a red barn. I painted a red barn. Did you really? Painting as well. I've been, I was doing, when I'm on the road with the midtime and I take pictures of where we travel. And if we're driving, I see anything, I just take a picture. And I love barns and farms. Yeah. You know, when you grow up on Delaware, every one of my family members, my mom and pop up, they're all farmers. So my mom and dad were farmers before they met. So I'm not a farmer. I can't grow corn to save my life or anything. But, um, uh, but anyway, I wish I had. But that you can now. make a mean popcorn, can't you? Yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I can. But uh, anyway, I forgot what I, was, what I was saying. But so but. you're talking about whether or not any of that's for sale, or if that. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I took it. I was. I, that's what I was trying to say. I apologize. All the photographs I was looking at that I've been taking on the road while I was driving down the road, I came across several shots. I go, wow, I want to paint that. So I've been painting actual photographs that I've taken on the road, and I did this red barn. That's nice. And. Uh, um, somebody bought it. Somebody saw it online and, and you know what? I, I won't divulge how much it was, but I was really in shock and well, I was very, very, it came at the right time. A side thing. I know they say side hustle, but you, you love what you're doing. So could yeah. it be a side thing? Sure. I mean, when I was in next to normal, I, that's where I started painting. I was painting backstage. I had the urge and I, and I started painting in my dressing room. I would go two hours before showtime and I would paint. And before you knew it, I had about 20 or so paintings in my room. Some wow. this big, some this big. Yeah. And one particular night, it was so crazy. A friend comes to see me backstage and she brings her friend who happens to own an art gallery on the east side. And when she looks around the room at all my paintings, she goes, who, who painted all these? Right. And I was like, I did. She goes, are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. And so it, she it wasn't you know, the interior decorator. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And so she was nice enough to said, why don't we do a showing of your work? So well, uh, years what, ago, 
Yeah, we did a gallery showing. I sold several paintings that evening. It was wonderful. Well, look what's going on here. This is a fantastic painting from Bernadette. Maureen nice. says, gorgeous painting. What a gift you have. Chris in Ohio says, great painting. Denise says, beautiful painting. Thank Jill you. says, great painting. Thank Kathy you. Short in Cleveland, beautiful. It's nice to see you take advantage of your downtime. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll look at it more here. Jeez. Everyone's oh, sorry. Sorry, you want to see it more? We always okay. see chairs on our show. Uh, let's see that again. <laughs> Well, there it is. where is that of? Is that is that Oregon? It's kind of everywhere I've been on the road. It's kind of a mixture of everything I've seen all my life, all the years. The highway, the dotted lines, stretching out way, way, way into the distance of what's coming up and what's coming up on the horizon. Man, that's just going down, just traveling into the mountains. You know, so it's it's from all over. I don't know what to say. It's No, it's beautiful. No, it's really Anyway, cool. it's kind of don't, from all don't, over. Don't stop doing that. See, everybody has hidden talents. There might be people watching, probably a lot of people watching live, or they'll watch this on our YouTube channel, uh, Jim Masters TV in the archives, who don't know that uh, Bobby Spencer, who they saw in Midtown Men or Jersey Boys or anything else, does that. We all have uh, these extra side things, and that's a, that's a beautiful talent. It just proves that you need, you're somebody very much like me, kindred spirits, you got to keep creating. It's one of the reasons why I created this show I bet. 30 weeks ago uh, to balance the television and radio work is got to keep creating and creating. It's it's in you. you, like you can't not create, right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. You can't, you cannot create. I was just still creating today, you know? Yeah, so yeah. that's that's a beautiful. What are some other sides of Bobby Spencer we don't know? Obviously, a brilliant painter. What other kinds of things uh, do you like to do hobby wise or that inspire you? Oh, I don't know. You know, I love. I'm just old school. I I miss when I when I have downtime. To be honest, I go to YouTube and I'll look up Johnny Carson. I look up oh, Steve Martin. I look up. Yeah. I yeah. look up Dean Martin. I look. I Frank Dick Sinatra. Cabot. Oh, Dick Cavett. Absolutely. Yeah. I just watched Dick Cavett, you know, yeah. last week on Amazon. Man. Terrific. Yeah. I love yeah. him. Oh yeah. yeah. So that yeah. old, there's nothing, you were saying it earlier and I think you're spot on, man. That whole conversation kind of theme is, is out the window. It's still there with wonderful shows that, that do exist, but there's, there's, there's nothing like that old school. I don't, I, you know, I used to sit up with my mom and watch Johnny Carson on Fridays at the end of the week, she'd let me watch Johnny. And, and of course, Johnny always had, you know, um, you know, all his specials on. So, you know, I grew up, Learning, I, I knew all, I know all that. I, I know mindless trivia of that, of that time and era. There's no doubt. And you I know, know it was, it was an added layer for me, not just with music, but that oh, added yeah. layer of Steve Martin, that added layer of Johnny Carson gave me a lot of that as I'm on stage. I'm sure of that. Right. Exactly. As far as presentation, uh, me too. I've always enjoyed Dick uh, Cavett, Dick Clark too, a brilliant host. He can host mm. about anything sure. uh, like Douglas Merv Griffin. I mean, you name yeah. it, Johnny Carson, um, even Ryan Seacrest. I think he's a really good host too. He, uh, you can throw anything at him and he can roll with it. Uh, one of my friends, Regis Philbin, who we just lost to, was another fantastic host. So you could throw any show at him yeah. and he can he can master it. And of course, Alex Trebek, who we just uh, lost as well. Um, huge, huge Jeopardy fan. Oh my gosh. I, that, Pat, was a, that was a blow. That was a that blow. That was a blow. Pat, Pat Sajak is really good too. He's got uh, all those years with Wheel of Fortune and he's got that wit, that dry wit as well. And somebody else that had dry wit that's watching tonight, George Burns. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes. You know something? I, if no one knows it, man, they need to go out and really YouTube uh, George and Gracie. Those shows back oh, then, yes. uh, they, they were brilliant shows. They really I, were. I actually watched them last summer. I, I would. There was one morning I just couldn't sleep, and when I got up, I was in Connecticut. One of the shots you showed, that's me in the show called Because of Winn-Dixie, which is about that big dog that comes into town. And, and um, it was there that I caught that show and I'd never seen it before. And I was so taken with, with the writing, with the editing, with the staging. If they were ahead of that show was ahead of its time. And if you I, don't know it, people look it up. I'm telling you, you'll feel the same way that yeah. we do. It I was think incredible. It, Antenna TV uh, re-airs all that. Was it. That yeah. was it. Yeah. Was it. Yeah. They yeah. even, they've, they've even re-aired the Paul Lind show, which was oh. short lived, but he was hilarious. I mean, I, I saw it. a little of that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? He's just crazy. Uh, <laughs> Dick Van Dyke. I oh, mean, these are Paul. all, you know, Dick Van Dyke show. Of course. Well, Paul Lind always had that laugh in the Hollywood squares. He was like, <laughs> like, right. Didn't he always do that? And, and I dream a genie. Oh, 
and and the 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 friend in I Dream a Genie, although I can't think of his acting name, but he was again, he's always the great sidekick. He was in Bobby Bill Hart. Daly. Bill yes, Daly. Bill Daly, one of the greatest. Roger Healy, and yes. then of course Gilligan, and of course I'm a huge Gilligan Island fan. I mean, uh, every episode. So we every had episode. we had Bob Denver who played Gilligan, and also in Dobie Gillis, his wife Dream of Denver, wonderful person, dear friend, was a guest on our series. I'd say in the summertime, probably late late August, early September, and she had looked at our set and she said, uh, "Jim, you're missing something from the set." Now we have all these things on the set, and she said, "I, I said, what do you what could we be missing, Dreama? Uh, she lives in West Virginia. She's a great actress. She." Uh, left the Hollywood life and uh, lives and has a radio station in West Virginia. So she said, you're missing a Gilligan. So I got to send you the Gilligan Love Aloha it. dream of Denver. And uh -huh. so now Gilligan is part of our set. And uh, you know, so you, it seems like you have an old school quality to you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I do. Which is cool. I mean, cool to have that. Um, Doreen says you should make more short videos. They were fun. We miss them. Bernadette says people in the arts are a creative lot. Love it so much. Fantastic. Uh, Bobby, you're gifted. Uh, beautiful. Uh, it's nice to see you taking advantage of your Dow time. Logan J. Uh, Moore, we uh, love you. And Win Dixie, come back soon to Connecticut. I wonder what town. You. Logan J, what town are you in in Connecticut? We have a lot of family in Connecticut. Uh, what town in Connecticut are you? Are you towards New Haven, Hartford, New London, Danbury, Stamford, Greenwich, uh, Old Saybrook? All beautiful areas. Know very well. Mm -hmm. uh, loved all the shows. Nothing like them. Now we have some music too that uh, I know you want to share with us as well, and you're going to play for us some cool things. Um, uh, thank you very much, Bernadette. Uh, here's another awesome guest to be part of our Lovety Cruise. Yeah, we're going to do a Lovety Cruise with all the Loveties. Maybe we'll have you on there. Hey, that's Fairfield. Fun. Yes, Fairfield. Hey, Fairfield, I, sure. I know Fairfield well. Sure. Not too, too far from you, Logan J. Um, you want to hit us with one of your songs? We have a lot of things to show, too. Yeah. But well, let me, if, if you wouldn't mind, I'm also my own stage manager. <laughs> you, you, have to be, you have to be your own stage manager performer this time, is. so I got to push the button, but... I'd like to do a little something from next to normal if that's all right. Yeah, why not? All right. This is a, a, a song called A Light in the Dark. And a lot of people know this tune, but it's so, um, I feel very uh, fitting for with how song. people are feeling right now, you know, that there is, you know, there is a light in the dark. That's beautiful. And we need more music like that. Absolutely. Apart, and I swear that somewhere in the night there's a light, a light in the 
nice my friend really nice beautiful oh, thank you absolutely beautiful you know music really is a unifier and a healer in so many different ways right and people have been uh, oh, yeah yeah they've been craving uh also christmas music i mean uh, i was talking to somebody the other night we had as a guest and like you know normally when the stores start uh putting up the decorations early before Halloween and everything. People complain and say, it's too early. We haven't even had, you know, the, the leaves haven't even changed on the trees yet. And you're doing it this year. People said, bring it on, bring on the good feelings, bring on the constant. And yeah. we always talk about that a lot. I tell people, you know, often when the days are dark or when they're unpredictable, like this year has definitely been in so many different ways. I mean, if you think of, the COVID and the economic and the civil unrest. And then of course, an election and everything, all these, any one of these things would be monumental by themselves, but to have everything going on all at the same time and all the weather of occurrences and everything to remind yourself of some of the constants in life, whether it's going to the ocean or getting out in nature or watching some of these nostalgic TV shows and movies and uh, listening to music and creating, surrounding yourself with uh, reminders of the blessings in your life and the constants really important right when you say bobby amen i don't have anything to add to that thank you jim oh uh, no that's uh, we're all about that here on the show denise says bravo love how you feel the song that you sing and that's something Thanks. that i've observed too i'm with denise on that you really do feel it you're you're wrapped in it when you're doing it aren't you yeah uh, it's a very special piece and uh, the, it's just very, very special. A lot of memories. <clears throat> it's weird. I can really see my myself. I see. I see. I know where I was in that part of the show. It's the end of the first act, and I, I really, I always see it. I always see it at the stage. I always see the moment when I do that song. It just never escapes me. The look on Alice's face. You know the the lighting. The the, the just the music. The way it creeps in. Yeah, that that show. Uh, yeah, it hit all the marks. Well, it certainly has with our lovely viewers here again. Denise says, bravo. Love how you feel it. Claps coming in from Cleveland with Kathy Short. <coughs> Jill says, beautiful. Tess LaBella in Florida, how beautiful. Thanks. Claps, claps, claps. Prayers. Wow, beautiful. Swoon from Maureen. That was so beautiful. Bernadette in heaven right now listening. Bravo. Kathy has mentioned a couple times, she loves the wall behind you. Did you paint ah. that? <laughs> Hey, thank you, painted. This, it, this, uh, this is our, uh, this is our backdrop, and it's, it's. I bought it. It's nineteen bucks, and oh, it hangs, and it looks it. like a barn. It looks it's, like a barn. Uh, uh, go ahead. Wood. It, it yeah. looks like wood, and they yeah. think you painted those musical <clears throat> notes on oh. there. But it's, it's like a canvas canopy sort of. Well, a lot of these shows, I was just kind of sick of looking at the background of the office, and I thought it'd be nice to kind right. of spruce up the event, right? Exactly. Yeah, everybody, if you see everybody on the, uh, all the stuff people are doing on the networks or Zoom, whatever they're doing, they always have bookshelves behind them. Yeah. <laughs> Probably they've never read any of those books, but it makes it look good <laughs> to have all those books behind them. Uh, yeah. Uh, Logan J says, bravo, hoping to see you again in person, Michael oh, and Darlene. Um, and D Swall says, next to normal, also showed stuffed grief. It makes you look crazy, Gabriel. That's cool. And uh, Christopher <laughs> said, Jim. <laughs> You're like, hey, that's cool. That's cool. And <laughs> next, <laughs> Christopher says, love that backdrop. Yeah, they, oh, they are you. loving. <laughs> Too bad they weren't a sponsor of yours, right? We could. <laughs> no, I wish. Okay. Thank you all. Now, uh, there's a, another project. There's another thing that's coming up that's really important that's very cool. And um, we have a uh, photo here. Let's see if we can dig that up. It's uh, it's the Waiting for Christmas. Tell us about that. Oh, Waiting on Christmas. You're waiting on I'd Christmas. I'd love yeah. to, y'all. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Here's a little. This is, um, <laughs> if you go on Spotify or Pandora, you'll see this. This, this song, I kind of no, I, I like the way you did that. I love the way. Oh, by the way, it's just here on, sticking on the tree. It's so perfect. Yeah. Santa props, left baby. that last night. My show's and, full of props, Jim. And it, and it goes right on conveniently, too. 
Yeah. Well, Jim, I mean, I, don't you find that audiences are very visual and I like if I'm telling yes. stories, let's, let's, you know, bring them in with stuff like that. It's, it's an added layer. Well, this song, uh, two years ago, <clears throat> my daughter was 10, so she's 12 now. And uh, I was sitting at the piano looking out our window and it was snowing on that particular day. It was December 23rd. And my daughter was the one that said, daddy, you really need to write a Christmas song. And I was like, Rain, I have tried to write a Christmas song, but they always come out cheesy. Somehow they come out cheesy. And literally, <clears throat> I said that, and then I played the first chord and, and on the piano, and I just kind of said, because um, what were we doing? We were literally, we were waiting on Christmas. And I said, waiting on Christmas, waiting all day. And I'm playing the piano. And then I hit record so I could record on the little thing. Hope and tomorrow, um, Santa sleigh. Oh, sleigh rhymes with day. That's pretty good. We'll arrive with what? Eight reindeer. Oh yeah, leading the way. Oh, rhymes with sleigh and day. That's when all the world's children are gonna say. Till then we're waiting on it. We're waiting on Christmas. Come on, Santa Claus, come on. Waiting on Christmas, come on. When I got done with that, my daughter goes, that's really good, daddy. I'm like, that is good. I like that. And so, I uh, went out on the road. I played the arrangement with my uh, Midtown Men band. And Your daughter would make really a great good. manager because she's huh? got good taste. Your daughter would make a great manager. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter actually is, is, both kids are talented, but within the last couple of weeks, she's written two killer songs on the uke. I have wow. to say, we're all like, uh, that's pretty deep for a 12 year old. So she's really, it's evoking out, COVID is evoking out a lot more a in lot this household more. than just from me. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, but seriously, it was just one of those songs. And uh, my manager was like, are you going to record that song? And I was like, well, yeah. And he goes, well, then get up here. So I went to Minnesota. Uh, my manager is Jeff V and his dad was Bobby V, a very famous singer from the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't be the Midtown Men or have over a thousand shows if it hadn't been for the Vs. So we owe them a lot. And then I recorded this, all these, most of these songs in Minnesota. Uh, this one in particular with a great group of musicians. And uh, if everybody would like to hear it, uh, maybe I could sing a little of it. And uh, then everybody can download it and party under the tree this year. That sounds cool. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Let me push a button here. Hold on. Again, I'm a stage manager as well. It's all about pushing buttons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oops. No, I don't want to delete. No, I'm not deleting. Here we go. <laughs> waiting on Christmas, waiting on day. Oh, tomorrow, Santa sleigh will arrive with their reindeer. Happy New Year. 
my faith of it. Happy New Year. Why do we not Christmas? Wait all day. Oh, tomorrow. Then I stay. For I'm very near. Need no way. That's when all the world's children are going to stay. They're gonna say to them waiting on it. I'll wait for Christmas. Everyone, <laughs> told you props, Jim. Props. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you props right here. <laughs> that was awesome. That, you know, oh, you, thanks. I love it. Uh, from one uh, personality type to another, you're a great entertainer. You really are. You know oh, how to put you. on a good performance and get people, you know, going and feeling good. Because look at this, Marines, and I'm going to show you the levity. Uh, we're very viewer centric here on the Jim Master Show Live. Doreen says, "Great song, Bobby. Love the song. Love the story about your daughter inspiring it." Jill says, "Great song and fun." Bernadette, love the song. Thanks. Jennifer Barry in Pennsylvania, cool song. Denise says, "Love the song. Very uplifting." And uh, wow. Again, all the comments are pouring in here on our show tonight. Good to have you with us. Hope the loveties are having a good time with us. Chair dancing. Oh, good. That's Terrific. Uh, and Waiting on Christmas, Thank you, good Thank song. You. Thank and you, Chris. Tess says, Bobby, you are something else. Thanks, LaBella. Oh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, how cool how your daughter has inspired you to write the Christmas song. Bernadette says, Bobby is on. Love it. <laughs> Bernadette also, lots of uh, emojis, every um, Christmas emoji you can have. Awesome. Kathy says, so festive as well. Cool Good. stuff. And that's kind of like the feedback you've been getting, right? Yeah, it's been really great with that song. Uh, I, and I'm so pleased because that's what I wanted. Everything that everyone was saying, I wanted festive, I wanted uplifting, I wanted old school, I wanted a big band, you know, backing me, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, I, everything. So I really appreciate people spend, uh, sending those messages because that's exactly what I was hoping for. And, and um, oh, hold on one sec, Jim. Again, props, Jim. Props. Oh, yeah. Um, Maureen says fab. So again, it is, Maureen hey. doesn't say fabulous. Maureen says fabulous. Oh, thank you, Maureen. If you go, if you're looking for my stuff, I'm just showing this. Is, you can see various album covers, okay, of J. Robert Spencer stuff available online. And this is another painting I did. It's crazy. I wanted to do this for the cover of my album. I painted that, and then I stood in front of it, and I had my son take that picture. So it looks pretty trippy, but I love it. Again, waiting on Christmas. Uh, sorry, almost there. Live It High is another great one. And then this one here, you can see it's called... Sorry, hold on. With the windows rolled down, and as you can see, I'm driving into my painting that I just showed everyone. I put that on the hood of my car and we took a picture for the album cover. So that is the album cover for, with the windows rolled down, I'm driving into my painting. So anyway. Very nice. Gotta be creative on the album covers too, you know? Driving into your future, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you have another song you want to uh, share? You've got them all rolled up now. We're really <laughs> excited, my friend, let's go, yeah. <laughs> well, let me get out my acoustic guitar for a little bit. Yes, yes. Um, let me see. Before I do, I could just check one more thing. I've got these wonderful tracks here for everybody. Um, Chris Joseph says, really like your artwork. Hey, thanks. Jill says, love that you're driving into your painting, which is cool. Oh, thank you. You know what I do when I, wait, I need to mention something special. Um, Jim, on Sunday night, I'm gonna be live virtual with my friend Thomas Schweitzer in Virginia his foundation is a musical therapy foundation called A Place to Be, a place to be va.org people can go to. And his musical therapy has changed people's lives for the last 10 years. I've known him since college. And he and I spoke in October, and he was putting together a very ambitious movie musical live 
with his students, with his special needs students, and animation. He asked me to narrate it. So there's an animated Bobby that I narrated for the show. Uh, Tom wrote the whole thing. His kids, he filmed them all on a green screen in Virginia separately. They edited the whole thing. It's remarkable. And we wrote two songs for it. And one of the songs is called Santa's Wish. And if everybody could go to Spotify or Pandora and look up Santa's Wish, it's under J. Robert Spencer. But that song is going to be performed this Sunday evening. Uh, you can uh, check out a place to be and find out what time I believe it's going to is be. That, a, is is yes. that a Hope for Christmas It's clip? Hope for Christmas. You want me That's to show correct. that? Because we have I'd it. love it. Would you show it since we're yeah. speaking it? Thanks, yeah. Jim. Take a look at uh, everything that he was just telling you about uh, um, in a little bit more of an elaborate form. It's really cool. Take a it look. Is. Right. Here we come. Very, very nice. cool. And it's Thank really, you for showing. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks. Thank you for showing that. Yeah. They, Tom does some great work, and uh, absolutely, I'm so honored to be a part of it. You know, when we did a we did a Zoom read through of the script with me and Tom and all of his kids. There was like 20 of them on the screen, and it was so fantastic to sit and listen to everybody because they've known each other for so long. And then I sang Santa's Wish, which is this really it's a pretty emotional ballad, <clears throat> and Tom wrote it, and then I kind of rearranged it a little bit here and there, whatever. It was a real collaborative effort. But when we got done with that reading, there was this young girl named Veronica. Well, she was in her 20s, but, um, and uh, she was crying. She couldn't stop. Everybody had left, we were done, and then she was still there on the screen. And so Tom goes, Veronica, honey, are you all right? And she started talking, but we, she had her mute button on. We couldn't hear her. He's like, honey, you need to turn off your mute button. She turned it off and she said, Robert, I she said, Robert, that was so beautiful. And she said, uh, we really need hope this Christmas. She said, I just, I, I pray for hope. And she just kept saying the word hope. And uh, when I wrote, when I, when I reworked, reworked some of the lyrics in Tom's song, when I got to the chorus, because of Veronica, I added the word hope to the song. So um, maybe I should just sing that song for everybody, Santa's Wish. I don't know if I, if it'll come across, but I'll do it for everybody. That because would be I'll great. do it for yeah. Tom and everybody there. And let's hear how it sounds. And again, you gotta remember, I'm here in Oregon playing guitar and singing. And we're there in Virginia just mp3 and back and forth trying to get this song right for the special unbelievable i know it's been a hard year and this whole world's changed so many things so different it's hard to explain so I came here just to tell you on this Christmas day you're not alone. Santa's on his way this year with every time I bring you joy and happiness. This year the truth. I bring you peace, hope, and friendliness. Snow will fall, and after all, there's something I must share. I wish you Merry Christmas this year. When you hear the Christmas 
Christmas bells all begin to ring. You can feel the seasons near and all its offers this year with every toy. I bring you joy and happiness. This year under the tree, I bring you peace, hope, and friendliness. Snow will fall, and after all, there's something I must share. I wish Merry Christmas, a brilliant Merry Christmas. I wish you Merry Christmas this year. That's this Sunday, December 20th, a place to be. See you there. Really beautiful. Again, another knockout, my friend, another knockout performance Thanks. and beautiful song. These are so heart centric and soulful and and we love that. And more lovely stuff coming your way. Marilyn says, simply beautiful. Willie, who's still with us, late into what is probably 2.20 a.m. All right. Hall I was born at 2.20 a.m., young born. lady. Yeah. <laughs> but, were you, but were you born in Holland? That's where she is. <laughs> no, Wilmington, Delaware. But anyway, 2.20 is a good time, Willie. <laughs> Touching and heartfelt, tears in my eyes. My heart is full. Uh, Jill says, so beautiful, so heartfelt. And uh, Kathy Short says, lovely and so meaningful. Maureen is saying, this touches my heart and my eyes are leaking. Oh, uh, thank you. Denise says, such an inspiring and beautiful song. We all need hope, which is wow. really, really important. Uh, Boy, Tom Schweitzer is going to really love all that, y'all. He's yeah. worked so hard on this. And uh, uh, I love being in a recording studio. I mean, I, it's it's work, but it's just so amazing to record something here and then shoot it across the planet and someone else can add their little stuff to it. And, and you know, that's what this is, man. It's just like collaborative and everybody pitched in for this big special, everybody, so. See, that's a really cool thing when people come together in the greatest of times and in the darkest of times. I think a true test to people's character is when they come together, when the chips are down, when hope is needed, when food is needed, when love and support is needed, when empathy is needed. Because we've been talking a lot of, on this show about how, you know, uh, I think, I'm hoping in this great pause that we've been experiencing as everybody's reevaluating their relationships, their jobs, their life, everything they've been doing thus far, that we sort of rise out of these ashes more loving and more collaborative and more empathetic, friendly. Cause you know, everybody's been complaining prior to what happened starting in January, February, March, what have you about road rage and about the school shootings and about divisiveness and the yelling and arguing and all the things that have been going on. Where's the civility? Where's the respect? Where's the, where's the good people? Everybody was saying what happened. And now I think we've had this sort of meeting of the minds of a divine mother nature and the earth coming together saying, all right, you know what? We gave you guys life. We gave you the earth. We gave you all this bounty and you're screwing it up. So we're going to throw major things at you all at the same time in the same year. And it's going to be at the start of something that would normally be hopeful, which is the start of a new decade. And we want to see, yeah. see how you, you know, pull out of this. We've seen the worst of the worst in people this year. We've also seen the best of the best of people this year. So I'm hoping that out of all of this, uh, as people are coming together and doing great things together, that uh, the good reigns over the evil, and uh, we come back out of this more loving and empathetic. How about you, Bobby? Yeah, man, you're right again. I, I, it's so obvious that it's just, I don't know, we have to just tie it and pull up our bootstraps and just hunker down. And we need to, well, something that we all need to work on, which is more empathy. It's hard, right? Yeah. Every time you're on Twitter, it's so easy to just knock somebody down because you're not in the same room with them. So you knock them down, then you're off. And you just walk away and the world has turned too quick that way, you know, with response with this and that. And again, Jim, it's, it's everything that you're talking about and that I believe in, which is, you know, where's the communication? Where are we with just sitting down and talking? I will say that with the masks that, you know, as well as, as anyone that everybody's looking into each other's eyes 
a lot more. Yes. And I've actually been looking into eyes more. And uh, I don't know if anybody else is feeling it, but I can still see people smiling, you know, through their eyes. And and it always goes back to, what is it, the old Shakespeare, um, the eyes are the windows to the soul. And so it's really been um, a, a beautiful um, thing to experience because we've been forced to, you know, forced to look in each other's eyes. And uh, maybe when this is all said and done, we'll, we won't stop looking in each other's eyes. I will just keep, keep it up. How has it, um, how has it changed what you're doing or what your message is? How has it enhanced it? How has it tweaked it at all? What yeah. you've experienced this year? Well, most, the majority of my songs are as positive as I can make them. They're, they're generally filled with love, positivity. Um, of course, the, there's one song I wrote called Holding On For Dear Life, which is out there. You can get it. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I love that song. Uh, it's it's it it came out of out of all this fear and angst and I was sitting there in my in my um, room in my living room and uh, let me get the, make sure I'm in the right key here hold on yeah that's it and I was going right and I was playing this these chords and I started singing them because this is what happens when I write I just go. Gonna be a song. I'm like holding on for dear life. Yeah, we're holding on for life, holding on for dear life, holding on for dear life, holding on for dear life, holding on for life, holding on for dear life. And I was like, everybody is holding on for dear life right now. And I was like, well, there's the course. And uh, it just came to me, but it it. It really, the thing I love about this song is that it's raw. When you hear the recording, it's raw and emotional. I know exactly where I was in that house when I recorded it. I was in our big tiled bathroom with my drums. And I was going for a very, like a la la la, boom, la 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 la, boom kind of thing. So when you hear the chorus of hold oh, on for dear life, boom. That spot, it's got that la 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 in, inspiration. And uh, my children sing background on it. My wife sings background. Our son Getty plays cello on it. So uh, it's very raw and emotional. And um, I really um, experimented with it a lot. And I'm so proud of it. And maybe I can sing a little bit live for everybody here for a little bit. That would be fantastic. That would be awesome. Guys, are right here. And then I got to the verse, I just thought, um, you know, lyrically, it's like, hey, are you all right? Yeah, we're the same over here on this side. We're waiting for the light. It's right. hard to know when the sun's going to shine, when tomorrow's put on hold for the rest of your life. Hey, yeah, are you all right? You're the same over here on this side. Waiting for the light. It's hard to know when the sun's gonna shine. But tomorrow's put on hold for the rest of your life. Holding on for dear life. Yeah, we're holding on for life. Holding on for dear life. Holding. On for dear life, yeah, we're holding on for life, holding on for dear life. Yeah. All sails are dry, and we're drifting on this uncertain tide. Waiting, no end in sight, and the world's waves crash and drown all your pride. The people have nowhere left to go and nowhere to hide. Holding on for dear life, yeah, we're holding on for life, holding on for dear life, 
acoustic version and thanks for letting me play it guys that's really nice bobby that's really really nice and you mentioned uh, your wife was involved and your son involved and what is that like having the family involved too that's beautiful isn't it well it was a chore to get them to do it you know that was <laughs> the thing it was pulling teeth but once they got doing it they were great and my son getty was very helpful because i don't have three arms so when i had to do various tracks of I would like push that button now, you know, and so everybody was stage managing at some point in that, but you know, I want to utilize them because they are so, well, they're my life and they're very talented. Well, why not put them on there? And my son does a great cello solo. You know, we're really blessed that both kids are just organically blessed with, you know, the DNA of music. The cello is such a great instrument, isn't it? Love that, it. Uh, we we, 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 we had talking about that last mm -hmm. night, uh, and several people uh, in my professional work. I was interviewing a cellist who had graduated from Juilliard, and I said to the cellist, mm -hmm. "I said, whenever I hear the cello, um, it sort of stops traffic for me. It just really is one of those instruments that cuts to the chase for me. It, you know, it hits like right here. It's very heart centric, very soulful." And uh, it's those warm, melancholy sort of tones that the cello has. So the Juilliard grad, when I was interviewing them again in my professional work on TV, uh, said, I said, you know, if the cello, if there was a, if the heart made a sound that mimicked an instrument, to me, that warm, deep, melancholy, loving, encompassing sound of the cello would be it. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> the, the the cellist said, "You know what? You know why that makes total sense." I said, "Well, why is that?" They said, "Because the cello, uh, and a lot of the string instruments, but especially the cello, is the closest in sound to the human voice, and that's why I'm humanizing it." He said. Wow. He said, and and that's the reason why he said it's you know known that the cello really has that quality, that warmth, that depth that uh, gives it sort of a humanistic quality. And that's what you're connecting with is the humanistic quality that you're feeling when you hear the cello. Um, so it's really cool to- That's uh, great. I yeah. love that. And I, I agree with that big time. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Isn't it? Now, have you ever attempted the cello? No. Uh-uh. No, I haven't. No. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. I, I don't think I could. I really, I, I don't. When I see what my son accomplishes with his fingers, it's crazy. It's, it's like he's got Van Halen stuff going on on his neck. He's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm like, what are you doing? He's crazy. <laughs> he's got some fast licks. Um, We're gonna be, you know, well, he's I'll got be to practice. Interviewing. He's got to practice, though. Everybody's got practice. I'll be having him uh, as a guest soon with his cello one of these days. I don't doubt it, huh? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, maybe one day. Just want to show you some of the comments coming in oh. here. Uh, Denise says, wonderful song, Love Your Voice. Thanks. Jill is saying, wow, we feel it with the song you just did. Willie still with us in Holland, loving it with all the emojis. Doreen says, great song, Bobby. We uh, need that song you. right now. Uh, great tune, Hold On For Dear Life. Uh, Anne had uh, said she listened to the song on YouTube, such a moving number. Hope there are no tears in the banana pudding that she was making. I love banana <laughs> pudding. <laughs> yes, yes. Kathy uh, claps. You, Kathy. And uh, Bernadette says, Jim, I hope you realize how these shows are helping folks hold on. I appreciate that, Bernadette. Bobby adds to the list of artists who are teaching people and helping people through these uncertain times. God bless. Uh -huh. I agree. Absolutely. This is quite an audience we have here. Um, Mateo Esposito says, your great Jersey voice was thrilling. Uh, great pop sound with your voice and guitar as well. Cool stuff. Loving it all. 2.30 a.m. in Holland. <laughs> and she loves the music. And Marilyn says, I pray we come out of 2020 more kind and less mean, less judging, more loving, really see others not buried in phones and devices. Life could just pass you by and you get to notice. Very important. Yeah. That's awesome, everybody. Gosh, darn it. See, Jim? 
you're bringing it to everybody and they got they're feeling it and they're enjoying it that's what they want they need to forget and they need to do something else and hear about other people's lives and whatnot you know that's right absolutely it's awesome here we go had a baby shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would see those. All lovely little reindeer used to like to call them names, but they never let poor Rudolph join in at her reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came and said, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, don't you guide my sleigh tonight? And now I'm going to be loved in And you shout it out with me You got the little screen here You'll go down in history Oh, I love you All right That is cool, that is cool People are going to want the Christmas music. <laughs> They're going to be looking for that online. And and uh, now there's a story to that too, right? You were doing some of the Christmas songs a while ago. And then once again, your daughter said. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, she uh, she was just. Uh, well, she's, she's amazing. Playing, she's been playing a lot of Christmas tunes on her ukulele. And she was playing Let Us Know earlier on her piano. I have to say Let Us Know is my favorite Christmas song. Um, it's just my favorite. I just love it so much. Um, I had a great story once where I, when I was in New York, I was doing the reading of a musical called Robin and the Seven Hoods, mm -hmm. which is based yeah. off of that movie with Sinatra all those years ago. And the musical version, they had all this great music from Sammy Kahn. Sammy Kahn wrote all those hits for, you know, Dean Martin back then, Sinatra. And when we got done with the reading, it was at the Friars Club in New York. Oh, and yeah, uh, sure. So we go into the bar area and we're schmoozing and we're meeting people. We're having a really great time. And Sammy Kahn's widow, I can't remember her name right now, She's there. So they walk me over and I'm talking with her. I'm introducing to her. She was like, what a lovely performance. You know, the usual wonderful shtick mm -hmm. that you get to hang out and talk with people. And I said to her, I got to say, you know, I'm so glad I got to meet you because I really want you to know that um, I love your husband's music so much. And my favorite song of all time is Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. She said, I've got a great so story of that song and how he wrote that and why. She said, true story. She said, we're, we're at the lodge, we're in the mountains, it's Christmas time, it's about two in the morning, there's a big fire going, and we're you know, getting something to eat, you know, Sammy and I, and the phone rings, and I pick it up, and it's Frank Sinatra, mm. and he wants to speak to Sammy, so she is like, you know, Sammy, Frank's on the phone, so mm. Sammy comes over, and this is according to her, this is what was, was said, it was, you know, Sammy, I want you to write a Christmas song, right? And Sammy goes, Frank, I'm Jewish. I don't write Christmas songs. <laughs> and Sinatra goes, no, no, no. He goes, I'm serious. I want you to write me a Christmas song. And whatever you said, you're going to do it. And you got a scooby dooby do. Yeah, so she said yeah. it was exactly like the song. She said he grabbed a drink with some ice in it and gets a yellow tablet with a pencil. And he sat in the chair by the fire and he wrote, let it snow, let it snow in five mm. minutes. Wow. And five minutes, yeah. Oh, my God. Pretty cool story. I loved I loved hearing that story and uh Do you want to play that, that now? Oh, I wish uh, I I wish I had that song, but let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight. I wish I had music for that. But what I do have, I just thought, Jim, um, if it's all right with you if I closed with a, a Christmas song tonight oh, for everybody. Sure. Yeah. You know, I know I've been doing some original stuff, but let's face it, it's Christmas and there's some beautiful classics and everybody, thanks for joining us. Oh, Jim, yeah. thanks for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. It means yeah. a lot to me. And well, uh, we'll have you do the song and then we'll say a goodbye. We'll do a nice goodbye. Okay. Let's or see. not a goodbye. We don't do goodbyes on the show. We say see you later. Oh, I love that. All right. Well, I will see you later. Let's see if we can do this. Here are the sounds. My friend Tom. A merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a
Peace, love, and all of the above. Merry Christmas and good night. That was really beautiful. Uh, J. Robert Spencer, better known as Bobby. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for all of the uh, the fantastic time and the music and the inspirational conversation, the levity, the levity, everything that all the viewers love. And I knew when you and I, and we sort of threw this together quick because we wanted yeah. to get you in before the holidays, so we sort of shuffled the schedule around and you shuffled and we put it all together and I'm so glad it worked out. I just wanna show you before you leave, cause you gotta leave with lots okay. of levity from our show. Maureen says, oh. Merry Christmas to you and your family, Bobby. Blessings in 2021, love and hugs from Arizona. Bernadette, one of our regular levities. Thank you, Bobby, for the songs and chat. Merry Christmas. Doreen, everybody watching on YouTube, we hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love that. Uh, Merry Christmas, Bobby, to you and your family. Happy holidays, Jim. Great show. Thank you, Doreen. We're here every day, and uh, I will collapse on Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that is, right? Yeah. Uh, Jill says, thank you, Bobby, for sharing your talent, your passion, and your heart with us. Merry Christmas. Christopher Joseph says, uh, great show and interview with Jim Masters and guest J. Robert Spencer at night all. Thank you very much, Christopher in Ohio. Denise says, my favorite Christmas song. Thank you for a beautiful rendition. Uh, Ann Wozniak says, uh, thank you, Bobby, for an awesome evening of your beautiful music. Lovely conversation and wishing you the happiest of holidays. Uh, Bernadette you, yeah. was... Um, she was singing along and playing piano with you. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, your originals are fantabulous, Bobby. Thank you. And uh, heartbeat equals bass drum to me, <laughs> Jennifer, <laughs> Kathleen in Cleveland. Thank you, Bobby, for remembering to be happy about Christmas. Too many people are depressed and can't seem to face the holidays. People like you and Jim have been a blessing this year. Thank uh -huh. you, Kathy. That's beautiful to say, huh? Yeah. And uh, Tesla Bella. Merry Christmas, Bobby. May God bless you and your family. Thank you, Jim, for healing us all. XXXOOO. You're very welcome, Tess. And uh, Jennifer on the couch under soft blanket enjoying tonight. That sounds cozy. Now all you need is some hot cocoa. Uh, thank you, Jim and Bobby, for a wonderful show. Happy holidays to you both. Thank you, Denise, and welcome to our show. Thanks. Hearts from Kathleen. Merry Christmas from Maureen. Blessings. Beautiful stuff, my friend. And uh, website, places where people can go to find some of your material. Please, thank you. Uh, go to www.jrobertspencer.com. J-R-O-B-E-R-T-S-P-E-N-C-E-R.com. M-O-U-S-E. <laughs> Or is it, since we're in the living, we don't use Zoom on this show, but we're living in the land of Zoom. And remember Zoom, Boston, Mass, 02134. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. There's also the new, wasn't there the, oh gosh, the new Zoom review comment. The new Zoom review, that's right. New, oh, it wasn't Zoom. With it was a frog. zoo. It was zoo. It was zoo. Z O O. It wasn't Z O O. -M. Sorry. Yeah. And the frog. And <laughs> yeah. The frog, the owl. The hippo. The hippo? Yes, yes, <laughs> totally, man. Uh oh. <laughs> I know that dates us, baby. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh, man. <laughs> Lovely land here on the Gym Master Show. Thanks for joining us. I want to tell you, this was really a terrific evening. And thanks for opening up about your life and sharing the uh, authenticity, all the spectacular music. Blessings to you and your, your family and friends. Good health. Let's stay connected, Bobby. And okay. uh, we'll keep the porch light on. You're welcome back on the show anytime. And I really, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had. And you enjoyed oh, it's wonderful. time with me. 
as much as I have with, with you. It was great, Jim. I really just can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. I had a wonderful evening. Oh, you're thank very you, welcome. Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas. Take care. Thanks for joining us. You too. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Amazing, cool, fantastic. All the words you guys have been using. Are we having fun, uh, Lovities? Absolutely. Another really cool night. And of course, uh, Bobby wishes you the best for the holidays. And so do we, all the joys and blessings of the holiday season. We've had these wonderful holiday shows that we've been putting together here with special guests from all walks of life and different backgrounds. And it's been amazing. I mean, what a day today with Sir James Galway and his uh, lovely duet partner and wife, uh, Lady Jean Galway, renowned Irish flautist uh, earlier today, uh, live from Switzerland and now live from beautiful Portland, Oregon. J. Robert Spencer, better known as Bobby, joining us talking about Jersey Boys, the Midtown Men, uh, growing up in Delaware and Texas and his life in Oregon, his wonderful uh, children and wife and his family and the ups and downs of the industry and of life and uh, coming out ahead and still wanting to inspire everybody like we all like to do. Merry Christmas, Bobby. May God bless you and your family. Thank you, Jim, for healing us all. My pleasure. Absolutely. And Monica says, Merry Christmas to you and yours, Bobby. Love you. All of you who have joined us for the first time on our YouTube channel, I'm your host, Jim Masters. We do this show every day with extraordinary, uh, inspiring conversations, entertainment, lovity, great guests from health and wellness and music, Broadway, Hollywood, television. Uh, some of them are my friends from my work in television and radio all these years. And uh, we, have, uh, we have authors, we have comedians, we have chefs. We did a two and a half hour show just talking about food, a host chat show with our lovely viewers. We've got some cool pop-up shows coming up as well uh, during the course of the Christmas week. But I want to let you know before we go, and we're going to take a look at some more of those comments we have an extraordinary weekend of guests coming up tomorrow live from Ireland. This is really cool. Originally with Riverdance and the High Kings, my good friend Darren Holden is going to be joining us here live. And we're so excited about it. Darren Holden is with the High Kings. And of course, uh, originally with uh, Riverdance, he's going to be here. Special time on our YouTube channel, 3 p.m. Eastern. That's 3 p.m. Eastern and... Uh, so 3 p.m. Eastern is noon Pacific and um, 8 p.m. GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. So basically it is uh, 8 p.m. in Ireland, Scotland, and England. 9 p.m. for folks watching in Switzerland and Sweden and Norway and Finland. And believe it or not, we have folks that do watch there. And uh, so Darren is going to be performing live. Again, he was with Riverdance and uh, he's with the High Kings. He's a brilliant singer, songwriter, musician. He's amazing. He's here tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern, new pac noon Pacific, 8 p.m. GMT on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. It's going to be really cool. Then tomorrow night, this brilliant performer, singer, songwriter, musician. She is Ashley Davis. She's part of the Ashley Davis band. Colin Farrell is in that band as well. She's all excited. She's going to perform live. She's got great music, great stories, and so much more. She's joining us tomorrow night on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Join us. And then live from Ireland, this is Orla Fallon. Of course, you know her from Celtic Woman, brilliant harpist and singer and musician, songwriter. She has a brilliant uh, solo career as well. And again, noted for her years with Celtic Woman. She is here at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. in Ireland, Scotland, and England on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Then Sunday night, another brilliant performer, an amazing artist. This is Michael Londra. This is the uh, Emmy-winning Michael Landra. He's had a couple of really very successful PBS specials. He's a great singer, songwriter, and performer as well. And he's going to be with us live. All kinds of music, all kinds of inspirational conversation, light love, levity, levity, all happening Sunday night on the Gym Master Show Live. Then on Monday, Luke McMaster is here. He and I were just chatting. Uh, earlier today in preparation for Monday's show. He's all excited. Wonderful Canadian singer and songwriter. Contemporary soul is his genre and so much more. Luke is really popular. And uh, he just hopped on about two days ago. And he's coming here Monday live at 7 p.m. Eastern 
And that's going to be really cool. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific here on the Jim Master Show Live. Luke McMaster, this Monday exclusively on our show. We do thank our great friend, Bobby, or J. Robert Spencer, joining us here on the program. Really cool bundle of energy, really cool guy. Again, he and I had met at the filming of the PBS special, The, Midten the Midtown Men, which was happening uh, in New Jersey. And I was there because I was with, uh, and still am with public television, love public television, worked with them for years as a host. And uh, so that's when we had met. But of course, even before all of that, and of course, Michael Longoria as well, who was a guest on our show. There's the Midtown Men, of course, coming uh, from the Jersey Boys, Jersey Boys as well. And here's Jersey Boys. So whether you've seen uh, the gang from Jersey Boys or Midtown Men, or you've seen uh, Bobby in other performances uh, as well, bundle of energy, loves what he uh, does. And I love the fact that he shared the story about his life too, as far as uh, his early you know, days and where he's originally from and all of that. That was really, really cool and very, very special. So we thank him for joining us here on the Gym Master Show Live. And again, a prolific amount of guests Two shows tomorrow, two shows Sunday, and then we're back on Monday. We will be taking some time during the holidays to spend with our family. I know you're going to miss us. You're going to miss us? We'll be away a couple of days uh, during the Christmas holidays, but we're going to do some pop-up shows and we're going to do some uh, cool surprise shows for you. So uh, those will be announced on our Facebook page at Gym Master TV. So make sure you uh, like. We would love it if you would like our Facebook page. That's Gym Masters TV. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, Twitch, and probably in the local supermarket at Gym Masters TV. And of course, on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. There are over 200 episodes of the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series that we launched back in April, uh, April, early May. And that you can see with amazing artists, amazing guests from all walks of life, and even host chat episodes where we've done banter with our lovely viewers from around the world. As you can see, we're a very viewer-centric show. We love to bring our viewers in. We really thank every single one of you for your time, your attention, your passion, for sharing the links, supporting the show, watching the show, tagging each other. Uh, this is one incredible community that we have started. And again, it comes out of my work as a television or radio personality and, and host and uh, turned on the lights uh, six, seven, eight months ago. And here we are. And it's been truly a blessing. And we thank all of you for all of the time and attention. You're welcome, Denise. And good to have you here. I love your name, Denise. Hola. And uh, Bernadette as well. You know, you'll be missed. Yes, during our holiday. But We'll check in. We'll check in with some surprise pop-up shows and things. Well, Jim, another excellent show that adds to my list of favorites. Thank you. Thank you as well. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now you have the Zoom song playing in your head, right? We're going to zoom a zoom a zoom a zoom. Remember that show? The kids show. And uh, of course, Electric Company had Rita Moreno and Morgan Freeman on it. Uh, and the end of it was Boston, Mass, O oh, two, one, three, four. Who remembers the big blue marble on public television? Uh, the, the big blue marble was the show where you can write, a, write for a pen pal. And I did. And I had a pen pal. She was in uh, Montmorency, France. And we wrote for years. As a matter of fact, I still have all the letters. And we actually uh, wrote maybe about six months ago and catched up with each other, you know, on our lives. Thank you, Jim, for helping us through these hard times with your wonderful show. My pleasure. And I hope that you guys are going to be here when things get better too, because a lot of you have been asking, you know, Jim, are you just doing this temporarily? Um, this is the kind of work I do professionally in television and radio. So if, uh, as long as you guys are here and this show continues to grow and people uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, love the Facebook page, and we just grow together, so I'm big about growing together. We will keep doing this show for you. I'll try to somehow continue to do it with my busy schedule and TV, radio, and stage, and all the work that I do. So uh, I will keep doing it as long as you guys are here loving it. And I know so many of you write to me personally on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, these really beautiful, heartfelt messages about how this show and the series 
is moving you, touching you and uh, entertaining you and you're having a lot of fun. It takes your mind off the craziness of life. Well, that is perfect. That is one of the things that I love doing. I like inspiring people, lifting people just like Bobby does. And uh, I'm, so many of you are just telling each other about it. And we are booked with guests all the way till February, which I can't, you know, other than during Christmas, New Year's, where we're going to take a little break. But um, in January, after this past weekend, uh, this coming up weekend, whew, what day is it? <laughs> after this uh, mega weekend of two shows a day that we're doing, um, it's we've, we are booked from January all the way into February and amazing guests coming up. I want to tell you, uh, thank you very much, Jill. Thank you for another amazing show, Jim. You're amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Jill Kathleen will be calling you this weekend. Thank you for your call. I really appreciate it. My dear friend, I will definitely catch up today's show another time. Hope you had a good day. You as well, Monica. Thanks for watching on our YouTube channel. I hope you will Monica McDonough. Is that a Scottish name or Irish? And maybe it's both. Merry Christmas to you and yours as well. Love you. Thank you, Monica, for tuning in. I hope you'll join us regularly. And a Merry Christmas as well. My dear friend, Tess LaBella. We love you, Tess. We love you, Tess. And you know what? Since we've been in a holiday mood, I still have something that Tess made for our show. And um, we have a lot of our guests who want to uh, share their holiday wishes for me and all the loveties and how much they've enjoyed being guests on the show. So we're going to debut some of those during the Christmas uh, New Year's week. But if you didn't see this, our dear friend, actress, comedian, and voice artist, Tess LaBella, uh, well, Aunt Marion, there is this Aunt Marion who's a big fan of our show. And she had a very special message for the Gym Master Show and all the loveties. And since we're in the holiday spirit, we'll share it again with you if you missed it. It's pretty cool. Here's Aunt Marion and happy holidays. Gym Masters, or should I say Mr. Lovety, I am so happy to have my debut on your show. And uh, I just thought I'd prepare the nice little uh, Christmas song uh, for you and your loveties in Lovety Hall. And I know how you're a fan of a cappella. And since I have perfect pitch. I thought this would be a perfect time to sing one of my favorite holiday songs. So I hope you enjoy it. Here goes. <laughs> have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. I don't know if there'll be snow, uh, but have a cup of cheer. Have a holly jolly Christmas. And when you walk down the street, say hello to friends you know um, and everyone you meet. Oh, ho, the mistletoe hung where you can see. Somebody waits for you. Um, uh, kiss a once for me. Have a holly jolly Christmas. And in case you didn't hear, oh, by golly, have a holly jolly Christmas this year. Have a holly jolly Christmas, Mr. Lovety, and all the Loveties. Thanks so much. Bye from Aunt Marion. <laughs> you got to admit, that's pretty cool, right? Made especially for the Gym Masters Show Live and all of our lovely viewers. If you missed this episode or any of the episodes of our series and you'd like to uh, see them, a lot of our viewers binge on our shows. And uh, sometimes I catch myself, but I don't always get a chance to see the show again right after you know, I do host and produce these shows because I'm always working on the next show. And then there's other things that happen in my world and, and the work that I do that take me away. But uh, every once in a while, I'll have them on in the background while I'm doing some other things and really enjoy uh, just this whole thing that we've created here. So if you have missed any of the episodes, over 200 episodes, 38 plus weeks, I think it is now, uh, you can see them all on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV, and uh, I think you're going to get a kick out of them. Some really amazing, amazing uh, 
it's just episodes of inspiri inspiring conversation and lovety levity entertainment, cool things on location. We even took guests uh, or our viewers to the Netherlands. We did an episode in uh, Colorado at Red Rocks. We went to Hollywood and LA and Malibu. We took it to the Brady Bunch house and the house where the TV series Family with Christy McNichol and Seda Thompson and uh, James Broderick and Meredith Baxter Burney and Gary Frank and Quinn Cummings uh, did that show on ABC and so much more. You can see them all on our YouTube uh, channel at Jim Masters TV. Now, there is one guest that we had on, I would say about four months ago, uh, and she's a Hollywood legend, a brilliant actress, and she was on with another guest that was with us at the same time, and we had such a hilarious show. She was a big fan of our show. She loved our show. She was with her daughter. Uh, her, she was staying at her daughter's house in Florida through all everything going on. And her father was, uh, I think, head of MGM and CBS and everything. Um, some of you may remember who I'm talking about, but uh, one of our guests, Sky Aubrey, the brilliant actress, uh, passed away, unfortunately, uh, about two weeks ago. And I got word then, but couldn't say anything publicly. So if you may remember, Edward Jordan was um, our very special guest, the producer and director. And uh, she was on too, and she absolutely loved the show. And she, she and I just hit it off immediately. It was we were laughing and laughing and laughing. We're gonna have next week a very special rebroadcast of that episode. Uh, I told Edward we would do a special rebroadcast. Uh, it'll either be next week or the week between Christmas and New Year's uh, of the episode where she was a guest, which was only four months ago. Um, it was, you know, sort of sudden and it was out of left field. So we want to pay, uh, homage and we want to honor her by rebroadcasting that really very special episode where legendary, uh, Hollywood actress, and uh, just a really wonderful person. Um, uh, none of that, uh, air about her, no ego, straight shooter. She was on Batman. I mean, just all these different shows she was on and everything. We had such a brilliant uh, conversation and we heard that she passed away just about two weeks ago. So we couldn't say anything publicly until the family had released the information, but uh, sad news, I know. And I wanted to mention it to all of you because I know many of you watched that episode and you really, really enjoyed it. So we're going to rebroadcast that. We'll let you know on our Facebook page at Jim Masters TV. We have an events section. Check out the events section on Facebook so you can see um, all the upcoming episodes. So we try to keep ahead of it, <laughs> but there's so many shows that we do daily that sometimes it's hard to keep ahead of it, but definitely check that out. We'll announce when we rebroadcast that. We just want to pay, um, a glowing, uh, honor to, to her because, uh, she really, she just had some wonderful things that she shared with us. And I really liked her and we were hoping to get together too. She's in, she was in Florida living at her daughter's. Some of you I'm sure saw that episode and she, Sky Aubrey with Edward Jordan. Uh, it was hilarious and, um, sad, you know, another 2020 situation, um, natural causes of course, but, uh, gone too soon. So we're going to do a special, um, it's the first time we've actually had somebody pass away that was a guest. Um, so we're going to, we can't go unnoticed with that. So keep our breasts and we will share that. I also want to let you know that, uh, if you have ideas for guests, now we have a lot of guests coming on, as you know, I find guests from colleagues and friends and people I've known in television and, and film and stage and radio, you know, for years, uh, several of my friends in the industry have been finding guests. There's PR people that are bringing guests on. There are guests who are watching our series on YouTube, loving the feel, the vibe, this whole lovety atmosphere, and they want to come on the show. Like uh, Bobby, Bobby approached me and said, you know, I want to come on your show. We got this cool event that's happening and we want to, you know, uh, I want to pop on. So we actually moved a couple of things around so Bobby could be on tonight. And that's why we had the two shows, Sir James Galway and Lady Jean Galway earlier, and then J. Robert Spencer, Bobby, tonight, 
because we wanted to get him in for the holidays because he had some special things he wanted to share. So uh, every once in a while, we try to do that as best as we can. So, um, but we are booked with guests all the way till just about February. And I just want to show you some of the cool people. Do you know, remember, of course, Anson Williams, who played Potsy on Happy Days? He's going to be coming on our show in uh, January. Uh, Cindy Williams, who was Shirley Feeney, is going to be on. Speaking of television, you can see Kathy Garver, who played Sissy on Family Affairs. She was on our show. You can see that in the archives. Uh, Allison Arngrim, who was Nellie Olson on Little House in the Prairie. She was on recently. You can see that hilarious episode as well. Stan Livingston, who was Chip Douglas on uh, My Three Sons. You can see that episode as well. And uh, so many others. But I want to show you some cool things that are happening in January. Uh, brilliant English country music star Nathan Carter, who I interviewed on public television, He's going to be here in January. An international Greek tenor, Mario Frangoulis, is going to be with us live from Athens, Greece. He's going to be here as well in January. And so much more. And coming up next week, an appearance from Santa Claus, of course, hopefully coming down your chimney. Uh, that is me in New York City. <laughs> I think it was two, two years ago, maybe. Uh, I was the master of ceremonies for this big concert concert event in Manhattan. And they had also asked me, it was a dear friend of mine, and they had asked me if I could also double as Santa Claus. So it was kind of like a Clark Kent Superman situation. I was the master of ceremonies in my tuxedo, and then I had to run in the green room quickly. They had a Santa suit waiting for me, and that thing weighed about, I don't know, I felt like it was 100 pounds, <laughs> very heavy, but really cool. And uh, so that's in the green room uh, in the city when I was the MC and also playing Santa Claus. And you know, when you wear a Santa Claus costume, whew, kids come up to you, but not only kids, but the adults also start talking like, hi, Santa, hi, did you get my list? <laughs> it's really amazing. People, even people that are sort of Grinch-like, all of a sudden when they see Santa Claus and standing in front of them, uh, they sort of <laughs> melt a little bit. There's uh, yours truly as Santa Claus again. And of course, in uh, wonderful New York, uh, where I'm originally from, out east on Long Island. If you didn't get a chance to see the New York City uh, Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center, there she sits, glorious. Uh, one of the constants in life, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's, constants in our crazy lives. And uh, what a joyous time it is and to count our blessings. Uh, every single day. Let's take a look at some of the comments and we will uh, wrap up. Yes, we will have that rebroadcast for Sky Aubrey. She was amazing. Absolutely, Jill. Thank you, Denise. Yes, you probably remember I'm, you were watching. I think some of you were actually commenting during that. Good night to all of you. Absolutely. This is like the Waltons. Good night, John Boy. Good night, you. Good night. Love, Aunt Marion. Bravo, Aunt Marion. I just love you. Love, Aunt Marion. Absolutely. <laughs> I, Aunt Marion. Let me see. Aunt Marion. My father actually has an Aunt Marion. Uh, my, my mother has a sister, Marion. Isn't that amazing? Love, Aunt Marion. Thank you very much. You'll keep watching the show. I love that. Kathy says, Jim... Thank you, Jim, always for having the perfect guest. And yes, I hope you're doing this show for a long, long time. Have a great evening. Kathy, thank you very much. And thanks to all of you behind the scenes who've been helping the show in different ways, spreading the word and suggesting suggesting guests, uh, telling your friends and family to watch. Good night. Have a great night, Jim. To you too. Kathleen and I were on Rachel Ray. We've got to do that again. I really miss you, Kathy. Kathy. Can I call you Kathy? My cousin is Kathy. You know, with the Irish side of my family, there's always a Kathleen in there. Um, have a good night, Kathy or Kathleen. <laughs> Kathleen, um, we will continue to watch and support your show. Thank you, Denise. I love that. And Bernadette, you're spot on. We've built a loving community and it's it's made to last. It's This uh, show is welcome to all ages, all genders, all heights, all weights, all income levels, all zip codes, all ways of thinking. Doesn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat, independent, uh, religious, atheists, you know, it doesn't matter. If you like to have a good time, if you like to be inspired, educated, entertained, 
This is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series with the sensibilities of old school talk shows with the modern vibe of today. That's what we're all about. There is no uh, coat check at the door here. There's plenty of places where, you know, you got to co check your coat. You don't have to hear as long as you want to have a good time and you're respectful and civil. And that's what it's all about. That's what we love. This has been such a heartwarming evening. Uh, thank you so much, Jim. You give us all hope for a better tomorrow. Thank you very much, Maureen. I love that. Watching on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. And have a busy week. So I'm glad to be able to binge on YouTube to catch up. Good night, Jim and everyone. Thank you, Anne. We love you, Anne. I really appreciate that. And Denise says, thank you, Jim. Bernadette says, well, Jim, another excellent show that adds to my list of favorites. Thank you. You're very welcome. Fantastic with Aunt Marion. Everyone needs an Aunt Marion, right? Denise, thank you very much. Good night, Jim, and enjoy the rest of your evening as well. Denise, thank you for joining us. And all of you uh, wonderful, lovely viewers, may your days be merry and bright. Mm. Just a little bit of that Bailey's left. All it needs is a little, just a little bit in there. All it needs is a little uh, ice cube, and that's about it. Let's see. Maybe this weekend we can squeeze in the big panda that we have, Lin Lin. I know you guys like that. We we did show George and Gilligan and Silver, the Silver Dog. We didn't show your other cast of uh, character favorite, Jimmy. So it's the holidays. So there you go. There's Jimmy up close and personal. He's waving. Uh, this was actually a Christmas gift from my parents when I was a kid. And look at him. He's in great shape, isn't he? And uh, well, that was only like 10 years ago, you know, when I was a kid, <laughs> just about 10 or 15, maybe uh, with his blue suede shoes. But they're they're actually they're like those knockers. Remember those knocker toys years ago? Those two round balls on the string clacks. People used to call them clacks. Well, I think they banned them because kids were hitting each other in the eyes and everything. Leave it to kids. Right. Uh, so he's here and he puts smiles on people's faces. He's a happy clown. So if you're afraid of clowns, Jimmy is a happy one. We only have uh, happiness and levity on this show. All right, gang, we're going to wrap up here. We have incredible shows on every day, two shows. Thank you, Sherry. Love when you're watching. And Jennifer Barry says three more days until winter solstice and Yule. I can't wait. I know you're always good at counting all of that down. My friend, Jennifer. Uh, did you dig out of the snow, Jennifer? I know you've had a lot of snow there in Allentown, Pennsylvania. We had a lot here, um, you know, a little further north from you, but uh, <laughs> uh, we didn't get what you got. You really got nailed. So again, uh, we'll be back at 3 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. It's Darren Holden live from Ireland sings and uh, celebrates the holidays with us. And then again, tomorrow night, that's 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Uh, 8 p.m. GMT on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Then tomorrow night, Ashley Davis is going to be here. Brilliant singer, songwriter, musician. That's 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Tomorrow night on the YouTube channel as well. On Sunday, Orla Fallon is going to be here live from Ireland. She used to be with Celtic Woman. Michael Lundra, Emmy-winning Michael Lundra, singer-songwriter, is going to be with us on Sunday night. Uh, Monday, Luke McMaster is going to be with us as well. And of course, as we always say on this show, don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share the smile with the world. Don't forget to share the levity as well. And of course, find your Zen place. Mine is with loving family and friends. Of course, time at the ocean. Love the ocean. Growing up here in the Northeastern United States, right near the ocean, uh, swimming and boogie boarding and surfing and sailing and kiteboarding and walking the ocean. Although I don't think I would do that today could walk the ocean, but not necessarily, uh, <laughs> not necessarily swim it. Um, you know where this photo was taken, actually? Uh, this photo was taken back home, where I'm originally from, uh, in New York on Long Island. This uh, was taken on the south shore of Long Island. That's the Atlantic Ocean, and that's Robert Moses State Park and Beach on Long Island in New York on the uh, South Shore. That's where this is. And we've been to, of course, uh, all the beaches on the island, North Shore, South Shore, out east, the whole bit. So that's where that was taken. Some people have asked. The other Zen place for me is my work in television, radio, stage, uh, on camera, behind the scenes, as well as hosting and um, 
anchoring news and everything, everything I've done. A lot of different hats. And in this business, as Bobby would tell you as well, you wear a lot of different hats, you do a lot of different things. So that's one of my Zen things in life as much as it is loving family and friends and so much more. And as always, we wrap our show by saying, don't forget to relax, to breathe, breathe from the diaphragm, love one another and love yourself. Happy holidays, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this episode, both episodes, two days, well, two shows in one day. And then we have two hours of what am I talking about? <laughs> no, we have more than two hours. I've been on the air since three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, I'm counting with my fingers. Six hours and 15 minutes I've been on, other than a quick break for dinner and threw on the velvety jacket. We had the red turtleneck earlier. Uh, but I'm used to this because of the radio shows I've done on television where I've been on for hours and hours and hours on TV and radio. So this is old, old hat to me to do uh, these shows like this. But we'll be back tomorrow and Sunday. <laughs> what day of the week is this? We'll be back tomorrow and Sunday with two shows at 3 and 7, both Saturday and Sunday. And then we're back on at um, 7 on Monday. Remind me if I forget. <laughs> All right, gang. We're going to wrap up. Robert Moses, beautiful beach. Absolutely. We got it good. Sent you pictures. I, my lawn chair in the snow. You, you were sitting in your lawn chair in the snow. Five to six inches where you are, Bernadette. The sleet compacted it. You guys got sleet. That's right. Kathleen, good night as well. Gang, this was a terrific day of epic episodes, right? Really, really cool stuff. We thank all of you for joining us here on the Gym Master Show Live, and uh, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. And uh, those of you who joined us for the first time, we welcome you here on our show, and we say good night. Take care. Be well. Love you all. Keep spreading the word. Keep telling everybody about our really cool series we have here, and we wish you all the blessings of the holidays. All right, gang. Love you all. Have a good night. We'll be back tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel with uh, Darren Holden live from Ireland. He was with Riverdance and the High Kings. Whew. That's it. I'm not going to say another word for the rest of the evening. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Love you, gang. Take care, and thanks for watching the Gym Master Show Live. Those of you who are still with us, you are the best of the best. You are the real levities. You are the troopers. We love you all. Have a good night. Take care. See you tomorrow.